Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be covering the controls you'll typically find in the throttle quadrant of the general aviation airplanes in Microsoft Flight Simulator. More specifically, I'll be covering the throttle, propeller, and mixture levers, as well as their relationship to each other. I'm also going to explain how some airplanes don't have the same number of controls in the throttle quadrant, and what that means for you when you're flying around with those airplanes in Flight Sim. Lastly, I'm also going to cover the differences between a throttle quadrant of a propeller-based airplane and a turboprop-based airplane. This is the sixth installment in the Instrument Insight series. In previous videos, I've covered the airspeed, attitude, and altitude indicators, as well as an overview of the HSI and a deep dive on flaps. If you haven't checked those out yet, I recommend that you do because there's all sorts of little details in those videos that you're going to learn, which are going to make your whole experience in Flight Sim a whole lot more fun. All right, let's start looking at the throttle quadrant. Depending on the airplane that you're flying, there are going to be either one, two, or three levers in the throttle quadrant. They're operated independently, but they have an effect on each other, and there's usually an order in which you want to adjust them, and we're going to see that in just a little bit once we get going. I'm using the Beechcraft Bonanza for this video because it has a throttle, prop, and mixture control, so I can explain how and when to operate all the different levers. Let's look at what each lever does really quickly before takeoff. The throttle lever controls how much power the engine is developing, and that's measured on the instrument panel with both the manifold pressure at the top, which is measured in inches of mercury, as well as the RPM gauge, which is right below it. Not every airplane is going to have the manifold pressure gauge though. There are going to be a lot of airplanes that are simply going to have an RPM gauge, and in those cases, you only have to refer to it to know how much power the engine is developing. The blue lever controls the prop RPM, and it does that by actually changing the angle of the blades of the propeller. Think of the propeller blades like if they were a wing. They attack the oncoming air at an angle, and depending on how angled they are, which is going to be dependent on where you set your propeller control, the more or less air they're going to move for every rotation of the propeller. In other words, you control the angle of the propeller blades and consequently the RPM of the engine with the blue prop control. Making a change to the prop control isn't quite as obvious as when you make a throttle change, which is going to have a very immediate effect, but we're going to see how that works once we're in the air. Now, if the airplane that you're flying doesn't have a prop control, like say the Cessna 152, that likely means that the propeller has a fixed pitch that can't be changed, so you don't even need to worry about it when you're flying around in flight sim. Finally, a lot of airplanes in Flight Sim have a red mixture lever that controls the air to fuel mixture of the engine. The right mixture level is going to change throughout your flight as your altitude changes. So whether it's on takeoff, cruise, climb, or descent, or even landing, you're going to have to make small adjustments to it. If you want to make your experience flying in Flight Sim as realistic as possible, you're going to have to go into the assistance options and go under aircraft systems and make sure that auto mixture is set to off. If you leave it to on, any changes you make to the mixture lever aren't actually going to make a difference, so you want to make sure that one is definitely off. Some airplanes in Flight Sim don't have a mixture lever at all, such as the Diamond DA40 and DA62, because they adjust the mixture automatically for you. So in those cases, you don't have to do anything to get the optimal mixture level. All right, that's enough theory for now. I'm going to taxi to the runway, and I will demonstrate how to use each one of these levers in flight. The first thing you're probably going to notice is that the PFD and the MFD look different from a few seconds ago, and that's because I loaded up the working title mod for the G1000 unit that's in this airplane. I've been avoiding using it for videos since I think most beginners are going to be using what comes stock with Flight Sim, but since it's soon going to be incorporated into the base install, I'm going to make an exception in this case since there are some things I won't be able to show you without it. As I was saying, you can get it for free if you go into the marketplace that you'll be able to get to from the main menus when you start up Flight Sim. All right, with that out of the way, let's look at takeoff. It probably won't come as a surprise that takeoff is done with all three levers pushed all the way in. You'll notice that the RPMs will go slightly into the red zone and it'll flash at you, but that won't last for very long as we continue our climb out. There's no reason to do a takeoff at less than full throttle since you really don't need to worry about long-term damage to the engine. If your plane has a prop lever though, do make sure it's pushed all the way in so that the engine develops the maximum RPM possible on takeoff. Lastly, there's the mixture lever, which you're also going to want to make sure is pushed all the way in before takeoff. The only exception is a takeoff at altitude, for example in Leadville, Colorado, where the runway is at almost 10,000 feet. 
In those situations, you'd want to adjust the mixture before takeoff so that the engine has the right fuel to air mix to develop enough power to get the rotation speed. I'm not going to cover specifically how to adjust the mixture for takeoff, but the concepts that I'm going to explain in a few seconds on how to adjust the mixture are going to basically be the exact same thing when you're on the ground. Once you're established in the climb and you've cleaned up the airplane by either raising the flaps or pulling up the landing gear, that's also when you'd be looking to make your first change to the throttle quadrant levers. In a plane without a prop control, for example in a Cessna 152, the only option you have to control the RPM that the engine is developing is with the throttle. Depending on the airplane that I'm flying, I'd probably reduce throttle ever so slightly to drop the RPMs about 100 to 200, just to say that we're just below the maximum that the engine can actually take. In an airplane with a prop control like Bonanza that I'm flying right now, you're going to see there's going to be two different gauges in the instrument panel, manifold pressure and RPMs. The throttle lever controls the manifold pressure gauge and the propeller lever controls the RPM gauge. It's not quite that simple though, if you don't push the throttle forward enough, you won't be able to get the propeller to spin faster than a certain amount. You still need to apply some throttle to be able to adjust the propeller properly. When you add throttle, what you're really doing is you're controlling the amount of fuel that's being sent to the engine. By adjusting the prop lever on the other hand, what you're doing is you're changing the pitch of the blades themselves. And that's going to increase the torque required to turn the propeller, and that's going to slow the engine down and cause a drop in RPMs. I have the throttle all the way in right now, and in theory I could reduce it a little bit, but I'm actually going to leave it there for my climb. I am going to pull the prop lever back just a little bit so I drop that same 100 to 200 RPMs. You're not going to notice a big change in how the airplane is flying. It might slow down a wee little bit, but the biggest difference that you're going to hear is that the engine's going to be making a lot less noise. The analogy I've heard for the propeller lever is that it's kind of like changing into a higher gear on a bicycle. You're going to push a little bit harder with your legs, but you don't need to pedal nearly as fast. It's not a perfect analogy though, because lower RPMs will slow the airplane down just a little bit. All right, now that I'm well into my climb, it's time to talk about that mysterious red mixture lever. The full forward position is called full rich, and if you start pulling the lever out, you're leaning the fuel to air mixture ratio of the engine. The main reason to lean the engine is to keep it burning fuel properly, which is going to cause an increase in fuel efficiency and keep the engines running happier. I only adjust the mixture if I'm going above around 3000 feet, but I've also read on the forums for flight sim that you do need to start leaning a little bit earlier, which apparently isn't very realistic. The easiest way to know how far you need to pull the mixture lever out is to rely on something called the exhaust gas temperature gauge, or EGT gauge for short. For the planes with AG1000, you're going to need, like I was saying earlier, that working title mod installed to be able to do this properly. The lean menu isn't implemented in the stock G1000 and it makes it a whole lot harder to be able to lean the engine properly. Once I go into the lean menu, I can see the EGT gauge right near the middle of the left hand side of the multifunction display. To adjust the mixture, all I do is I start pulling the lever back and I'm going to watch the EGT gauge and I'm going to watch for when the temperature is going to peak. At one point, it's going to start dropping back down again and that's where I need to stop. Once I've gone past the peak, I'm going to push the mixture back in just the slightest little bit to keep the mixture slightly rich. And like I was saying, I tend to start doing this from around 3000 feet and I repeat it every 3000 feet or so as I'm continuing up to my cruise altitude. Now there is a shortcut in the controls menu called set best mixture, which when you press it is supposed to set the mixture to the perfect setting for whatever altitude and power settings you currently have. Unfortunately though, as of the time I'm recording this, there is a bug that makes it kind of useless. If you do try and use that key binding, it's just going to cut off the mixture entirely, which really isn't what you want at all. If and when that bug gets fixed, that's probably what I would actually end up using rather than fiddling with the control myself. It's a decent compromise between realism and fun. Another thing to be aware of is that on turboprop planes, there is also a red lever, but that's actually called the condition lever, and it's not controlling the fuel to air mixture ratio. That lever only has three positions, high idle, low idle, and cutoff. 
When you're taxiing around on the ground, you would probably have the lever in the low idle position. And when you're getting ready to go flying and you're ready for takeoff, you would push it all the way forward into the high idle position. You can fly around in low idle and I've done it once or twice by accident, but you are supposed to be flying in the high idle position. When you pull the lever all the way back towards you, that's going to be the cutoff position, which is going to basically kill the engine. Before I look at cruise settings, I do want to remind you, if you get some value out of this video, please make sure to hit that like button and also please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And as usual, if you have questions or comments, put them below. Once I get up to cruise altitude, I'm going to let the airplane get up to its cruise speed by first leveling off, and then I'm going to adjust the throttle and RPM. The exact values you're going to use for each airplane are going to be different, but in the case of Bonanza, I'd reduce the propeller another 200 RPMs to have it sitting at around 2300. I'll likely keep the throttle close to full since at the higher altitude, the manifold pressure will have dropped off by itself. With the power and prop set, I'm going to do one last lean of the engines to get the best mixture that I can for my current altitude, power and prop settings. When you're ready to start your descent, you're going to have to pull back on the throttle and RPM levers to start your descent down to your approach altitude. An easy way to remember in which order you have to adjust the levers is that to reduce power, we start with the lever that's closest to us, so you do the throttle and then the prop. On the other hand, to increase power, you do the opposite. You start by moving the prop forward and then the throttle. And like I was saying earlier, the exact settings you're going to use are going to defer by airplane, but generally you'll want to drop the engine's RPM as much as possible so that you can maintain your airspeed, but also start a descent at the same time. I don't really touch the mixture on the way down since the engine is running slower, it doesn't really matter. But once I get below around 3000 to 5000 feet, I'll again push the mixture all the way back in to prepare for landing. Once I've leveled off at my approach altitude, I'll also bring the power and RPM back by first setting the prop control where I want it, which is typically going to be pretty close to full RPM. And then I'm going to advance the throttle to maintain that altitude without losing too much airspeed. As you're coming in to land, you're definitely going to want to double check the position of all your different levers. The throttle position is going to vary as you descend down to the runway and you're going to start pulling it back more and more until you get right over the runway and you pull it all the way back. The prop, on the other hand, should either be full forward or very close to full forward. You want the propeller to be as flat as possible when you're coming in to land. That's going to result in a low pitch and a high RPM if you have to apply power and go around. For the same reason, you're going to want the mixture lever to also be pushed all the way in. You want to make sure that if you are going to go around that you're going to have all the power and that the engine is as rich as possible. And that's an overview of how to use the throttle, prop and mixture levers throughout your flight. There are a lot more details I could have gotten into, but again, this is just an intro series just to give you an idea of how to use the controls. Hopefully you did still learn something useful from the video though, and if you did, please make sure to hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as usual, if you want to critique something I did, feel free to put a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.